Jude and his big sister Bailey. Jude turns five in just a few weeks. He's very happy-go-lucky and he's the kind of kid that always wants to help. You know, it, it's like he's just very charming and endearing and always wants the best for everyone. He's, he's, he's a sensitive little guy as well. And that was Matt Gare, Jude's dad. His young son with clear blue eyes and blonde hair hasn't had an easy time over the past two years after being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, a potentially life-threatening autoimmune condition in which the body stops producing insulin. He was three and a half. We'd just gotten out of nappies. And we, Danny and I, my wife and I, were, we were finally sleeping through the night. And then all of a sudden, you know, we had that first lockdown and then they, the kids were at home from school for so long and then they didn't get sick over the winter. And then we, that second lockdown ended and then we went back to school for a month and both kids just got, you know, the nastiest flu. It wasn't COVID or anything, but they got, they both got a, a good dose of the flu. And Bailey got over it quite quickly, but it lingered with Judith. You know, he had a snotty nose. Not, not necessarily sick, but he had a snotty nose for a, a good month. Then Jude's health took a concerning turn. One day he just started to drink water. Just, and when I say drink water, like he was thirsty all the time. A visit to their doctor was the next step, who decided that blood samples had to be taken for analysis. And my wife went with Jude and Bailey. So it was the three of them. They went, I think, on the Monday afternoon. That's when we could get a booking. And they went in there. And because he, he's so little, I, I don't think she had a Lancet kit. Or maybe she, she just had to cover her bases and she get, had to get like a, a good amount of blood to send off to the lab. But she couldn't find a vein. And she just, you know, I think she, she just put the fear of God into both of those. I'm sure unwillingly or unwittingly. I mean, it was over 10 times that she tried to find a vein in this little boy, and he, by the end of it, he was a quivering wreck. The following morning, they got the news that Jude had type 1 diabetes. From that moment on, their lives would never be the same again. He was immediately admitted to hospital. Matt had to leave Jude there with his mother because of COVID protocols at the time. His blood sugar was at 36, which is just, so unbelievably high knowing now what I know. Back then I was like, oh, okay, is that bad? And for him to be just happy as Larry, it, it, I don't know, it's just testament to the, just to his nature and how, how lovely he is. He, he was just sort of getting on with it. You know, obviously he must have been feeling awful or maybe that was just a norm for him at that time. I don't know. But yeah, the, the nurses were deeply shocked when they saw his, his blood sugar reading. After a week, Jude was discharged and the family began a journey they called their new normal. It involved up to five injections of insulin a day, counting carbohydrates in everything Jude ate, weighing food portions and checking on their young son throughout the night, ensuring that his sugar levels did not spike dangerously high or drop too low. For about a year, Jude fought loudly against the frequent injections, with both his parents having to hold him down each time he was injected against his will. It took its toll on the family, wearing all of them down, but then Matt, who is also a musician, began to think of ways to help process the trauma that the family had been through that would bring down their levels of stress. From early on in my life, I've, I've played musical instruments, and I've been through a couple of hard times. When I was very young, my best friend committed suicide. And uh, another close friend and I, we sort of, we, we found him. Which It was an awful time. It's not something I think about very much. But from about then, I used to just use instruments and that sort of sitting behind the guitar, hiding behind it, writing something soothing that could soothe me. Because playing a guitar or playing a ukulele or I play sort of stringed instruments, it always just, puts me at peace with the world. Now, every night, Matt plays the children a bedtime song. I make up little songs for them, about them, about their days, little stories about, you know, know, fighting things or flying away on dragons or 
you know, how much I love them, that sort of stuff. What should we make a song about? About you? What? And then a song about baby, then a song about you, and then a song about mummy. Doctor call, it's time to go. Results are back, don't go slow. One day I was just drumming around and, and I had the idea about sugar, sugar for your soul, like, and music being the sugar for my soul, really. And, and then it was just a little idea and then I started singing that, um, you know, you're the sugar for my soul and when you're high, I'll hold your toes and when you're low, I've got that sugar for your soul. When you're high. So, Sugar for Your Soul, a song about a little boy with diabetes and a family devoted to making his childhood as normal and happy as possible, was born. And so I thought, maybe I can just try and deal with everything in this song and make it something that heals me, but also something that's a love letter to Jude, you know, it's like, it's about him, it's you know, just how he's the best. If I could take it all away, I'd try. The process definitely helped me, and I hope one day, but maybe one day, he just knows how much we love him. Your mama's strong and boy, you got her eye. I'd do anything just to see them smile when I'm high. You hold my toes. As a mother of a type 1 diabetic daughter myself, I understand the challenges of bringing up a child with a potentially life threatening health condition. But every time I listen to the song that Matt wrote for his son, I smile, knowing that in facing adversity, there is strength, and in music, there is healing. You You can find Sugar For Your Soul on all streaming platforms. This podcast was produced by me, Catherine Rice. Audio recording and final mix by Alyosha Kolstock. Special thanks to the Gare family, for sharing their story.